So I came along from Eng Tech up to Chartered Engineer, and that took a number of years. So I'll go back and give you a little bit of history on myself, uh, facing my career. But the best thing to do really is stop on the way through and ask any questions. That's probably a better way, because I'm guessing if you've got a question, other people have as well. So I'll make a start. So obviously it goes back. So I left school and I always wanted to go to engineering. That was something from a child, like an ambition I had. Uh, I, I got what I needed, my grades to get, a, to get an apprenticeship. They weren't the greatest, if I'm honest with you, but I got what I needed to do. Uh, I started off working for a Danish firm uh, called Lumbeck Pharmaceuticals, and that company was FDA approved and made antidepressants. So I started off my time there as a mechanical apprentice technician, and then that led into doing junior engineer works for that company as well. Uh, unfortunately, that company closed in a, around the 2007 mark. Uh, at that point, I went to work for a firm called FlowServe, and I went contracting. So uh, obviously, I spent a couple of years there, and I did quite. Well. I travelled a little bit there, so I did a bit of time in Germany, Ireland, uh, work work around around the UK quite a bit, and got a lot of experience as a technician, and as obviously leading a job as well. So that was something different for me, and then. Uh, through circumstance at home, I wanted to come back to where I lived and, and get into an area. And I've always wanted to work in the nuclear industry. So I applied and I got a job at the time. It was British Energy in around 2009. And I came in British Energy as a mechanical technician again, working in the steam and rotating systems section, which is a really good job, but very challenging. And it was at that point then, I, I, I sort of looked at the nuclear institute because from a qualifications point of view, in the background, I'd done my HNC and my HND through Teesside University, and I was wanting to fall into a degree after that, but with the company I served my time at closing and having to travel around the country and Germany Island, various places, it wasn't sort of practical to do so. So when I came back into the, when I got a job at British Energy at Hartlepool Power Station, then I sort of reassessed my options. Now, it was going to be quite difficult given the role I was in to leave and do a degree at that point. And it was at this time that I got, uh, this must have been a colleague told me about the Nuclear Institute. So I got in contact with the Institute around 2009 and said, look, ultimately I want to be one day a chart engineer and that's where I want to get though. I explained my situation and where I was at and we put a plan together. So that plan started with me first registering myself as an engineering technician. And then within gaining experience in the role and work with the Nuclear Institute, I worked way up and a job came available as a work engineer, mechanical engineer within Hartlepool Power Station. So I applied for that and that was maybe after two years of coming into the business. So when I applied for that, I continued with my work and this sort of made me look up at, right, how do I get to an incorporate engineer? Because that was sort of my next level. Being in an engineering role as well, that, that helped me. So uh, EDF were fantastic as well. I've got a, a mentor, some you might know, Brian Matthews. He helped me through it a lot. Uh, we had a lot of actions in place as well as work-based training, new institute training. And to get me in corporate engineer, because I went through an individual route, I had to put a, a technical report together, which was a quite detailed report. I had to submit that. And quite frankly, it was quite, there was a lot to do there. So the Nuclear Institute supported me and they set me up with a mentor, a guy called Evan Wright. So he really put a lot of time into me. He, he came to visit me at Hartlepool, he sat down with me, he went through a lot, he reviewed my report, gave me some good feedback. And basically, he was a really good mentor, he helped me along the way. And also, once I submitted my report and that was accepted, I got invited for a technical interview. And I, that was the time I had, to go, I had to go down to Portsmouth for that. So again, uh, Evan was always on hand to support, so he sat down with me, told me what, what to expect. Uh, what sort of question I'll be looking at, how I need to present myself, what 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 technical aspects I'll be looking at from from my report. So we went through that with Evan. Uh, that continued for a number of years. So I was in I was in the engineering team for around six years in the work engineering team, and I think it must have took me around two years, and I actually gained me incorporated engineer status. And I believe I had two interviews. I had the initial interview down at Portsmouth, and then I went for another interview which was at Manchester, and it was obviously a little bit more orange because I didn't have that standard master's degree. So I had to do a little bit of work through the individual route to sort of 
prove I can work at that level and, and what I was currently doing in my role. So that involved in my role doing a lot of modifications and engineering changes on plant. So I used to use that as a lot of evidence to to show like my capabilities as an engineer. So that was again that 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 took a, quite a few years to get to that level. Uh, but I had good support to do that, and then from there it sort of it sort of changed a little bit. A lot of options opened up for me through work. So I got me incorporated engineer status. Uh, I'd also been engineer six years, so I was approached to take on a role at the station as a project manager, which was quite daunting really because I hadn't done anything at that sort of level. So I took on that role as project manager and managed some fairly big projects at Hartlepool. And then in between doing that role as well, I was also an area coordinator for various systems on site. So what that would mean when we have a statutory outreach, you would basically lead that area and coordinate the work. So it sort of fell in line with my project management role. So I spent two years then uh, through my me, me mentors at work, sort of going through gaining some practical experience. So from the project management side, I was gaining a lot of experience on that side and also implement a lot of engineering detail in the project I was working. So as you can imagine, you, you're always coming up against numerous problems as you're going through these projects. And it was a big learning curve. Uh, as well as that, I did various courses through EDF. So I did a, a getting started course with like an emerging talent process. And I also did a, a NLP leadership course, which added up to my CPD for the Nubian Institute for my development. And then in between that as well, I uh, attended a, quite a few lectures from the Nubian Institute, which also helped develop my engineering knowledge. And then I think we got around to, at this point, maybe it was around 2011, 2012 I was at. And then another opportunity after being a project manager for a couple of years came up, and that was about two years back to go as a lead of an engineering department. So that department was the work engineering group at Hartlepool. So I was successful in that appointment. I became lead of that that department and I have 11 engineers working for me. Uh, at this point, through talking with the Newton Institute, I uh, got in touch with Adriana and I sort of discussed my options of where I need to be to be chartered and what I would need to do. Obviously, running an engineering department opened up a lot of avenues, a lot of doors and it sort of a lot of the criteria that was required. I had the ticking them boxes now because I went through various roles and now not only I'd carried out engineering roles, I was now responsible for people carrying out roles under me. So that was it was quite interesting there. Uh, Adriana was brilliant, New England Institute were great. It was very streamlined, the process. Uh, so Adriana set me up with an initial application form, which I think it was 2,000 words, but I got carried away and did around 4,000, but there you go. So we, I went through that process uh, shortly after that, and I can't remember the actual time skills, but it wasn't too long. I came back in and I was uh, I was told, well, I need uh, various things I would need to submit off my original report that I sent in. So I had to submit a technical report. I also had to submit a, a one or two presentations that I delivered at station to the maintenance team, to project teams, and also had to include some modifications that I had actually carried out myself and some modifications that my team had carried out as well and that I had authorised. So I spent a while getting that information together and make sure I was happy with it, and then I sent that off. Uh, shortly after that, I think around maybe five weeks, I got a reply back from Adriana saying all the documentation was there and I was to attend an interview up at Newcastle. So I went up went up to Newcastle for a technical interview, which again, it was, uh, it was, it was really good. It was based around my... It was based on my technical report, the work that I'd done, and what the main benefit for me uh, going to the Nuclear Institute was that with me being in this industry, it was based on what I did in this industry. It wasn't generic engineering. It was about the work that I was carrying out. So it made life easy because I wasn't actually doing additional work, but stuff that I was already doing within my role. So I could refer back to work that I've been doing within the industry, within my role. So I wasn't actually starting all over again and taking on new projects, new roles to try and satisfy the requirements. So we went up, I went up to the technical interview, which went really well. So it was a two-stage interview. We do a technical interview, which is mainly based around your technical report. Uh, there was three people on the interview panel. You have the guy from the Newby Institute. You have an independent verifier, and I think that's another guy from the Institute as well. So and that went good. Uh, shortly after that, yeah, I, get, I got contacted the same day. You go outside the technical interview, then if you're successful, you go back for a professional review. So 
fortunately I went back for a professional review which was great we did maybe was another hour of an interview on the professional review and and that was that really uh, I went out there I had a pretty positive feeling I think I satisfied the questions that I was asked uh, and I was quite happy with it really uh, and it was this point I thought it would take quite a long time for the process to come through but in actual fact it didn't it was maybe I don't know it probably was less than a month later that the New Institute contacted me and said you know congratulations basically you've been successful and we've put you forward for a chartered engineer status so it was that was icing on the cake really so it drilled back to around 10 years worth of work with the Institute but what I can honestly say is that they were, they were very supportive. They helped me out a lot. My company EDF were brilliant. They supported me. And I think for any of those wanting to do that, it does help when you're in a, a business and you're using an institute that aligns with that business. It makes the process much more easy and simple. And that was that's around, that's, to be fair, that's a brief overview on my career in around, what was that, around 15, 10 minutes, so very short. I don't know if anyone's got any questions for me there, what they'd like me to answer. Um, Adriana had one for you, if I can get her to send a message over. Oh, she's got her hand up. And yeah. also, and also Clive does. Um, Clive, I'm going to give it a go and see if I can unmute you now. Hi. Hello. 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 Uh, can you answer your question, question please? Uh, Ross, thank you for that. Um, you're quite complimentary about the Nuclear Institute procedures as you step through the perhaps the most tortuous route of individual route from Eng Tech to Ieng and then individual route Ieng to Cieng. Thinking back, what more could the NI have done to streamline that process or assist you? Uh, as you proceeded through that route? Uh, yeah, good question. So it's it's really hard to sort of look at the Institute and say, well, you could have done more, you could have done this, because as you can probably get from what I've just spoken about, I'm very complimentary of it. Uh, but I think a lot of it, it's quite difficult on the individual route because with me falling short of having my master's degree, it was sort of looking around that line to say, well, okay, well, I need to go away now and I need to learn I need, to read, I need to learn myself through practical experience so I can come back through the individual route. Uh, one thing that we we'll maybe could do going forward would probably along that practical experience route, maybe put something together, some sort of process, because I sort of left at that point and then drifted and sort of went into various roles and picked up the experience. But what I could have done myself, I could have had maybe the competencies on hand and said, well, as I'm going along, right, I've done that one. This is something else I'm working towards. I can do this one. But I sort of did it retrospectively. I did the work, went back and went, well, OK, I've done this, this, this and this. And it was when I was a project manager, I thought, well, what I actually need to do now is have engineers working directly for me. And that's when I went into the engineer's role where I had a department working for me. So I sort of backfit it. But uh, if I had to, I'd probably say maybe it's from I eng to C eng, maybe it's have some structure of the experience, particularly if you're going through the, uh, the individual route to say, well, these are the competencies that you need to achieve and maybe maybe keep in contact that way because I sort of drifted away from the Institute for a while and a lot of that was around the fact that my job was so demanding as a project manager it was hard to get time. So that's probably one thing I would say, Clive, if I, if I was honest. No, thank, thank you very much for that, Ross. Says, in fact, that, that advice is most timely. Myself and Adriana attended a workshop at the Engineering Council this week where they're talking about rather than just having the technical report route having the experiential route and some of the larger institutes are piloting that at the moment but it's quite quite torturous because you have to map all the competencies to the educational requirements of a master's but it's certainly something we need to take on board um, with your advice there that's most helpful thank you yeah thanks for your question uh, I do have a couple more questions uh, that people have written to us. Uh, the first one came, comes from Adriana, and it's uh, what was easy to, or was it easy to submit your supporting evidence considering your security clearances at EDF? Uh, yeah, good question. So, like with anything, uh, 
the one good thing that we got to uh, through EDF is that there is processes in place. So maybe frustrating from the institute side with the information, but there is a process within EDF what you follow and you go through various checks through various security levels and then you get an outcome basically say, well, this is how you need to do it. This is the most efficient way. Uh, we got there and I think we used we used password protections as a means of sending things in encryption. So it was we got there in the end. It may take a little bit longer, but I'm guessing now you've been through that process with myself. Anybody else from EDF could sort of set that stand up so it'll be even easier again going forward. Does that answer the question? I know that was typed. Um, I believe so. Yes, she's nodding. Yes. Uh, I'm just going to get Diana to speak now. I'm going to unmute you. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Hello. Do you hear me? Yes, Hello. we hear you. Hi. Yeah, I'm Diana Kazbekova. Um, Hi, Diana. Yeah, thank you. I would like to be a part of uh, Nuclear Institute Young Generation Network and um, wish to create under under this in institute like uh, some research group where um, I suppose the research project about the rule of the social architecture for designing the portal of nuclear science and uh, concerning Central Asia countries. And um, I ask uh, this one, um, uh, Maybe you have some opportunities for free memberships for young generations from Central Asia. Do you? Uh, I don't actually. I don't have any experience with working with anybody. Talk along the lines of maybe doing some mentor work along that. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, Thank you. What we. Thank you. What we can do is if you can, you can email us um, after the session, if you email membership at Nuclear Institute, I can get one of my colleagues to get back to you with something. Yeah, is that okay? I, I, yeah? I, I will, yeah. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, no worries. Uh, we've got answer, another... Just to answer that down as well, if there's a... If you follow that, we start anything I can do to help out with, with what you're talking about there, uh, different people applications, then let me know and I'll do what I can. Yes, it will be perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I really appreciate yeah. Okay. Um, we do have another question from Andy. Um, Andy, I'm going to unmute you. Is that okay? Hello, Andy. Okay, I don't know if Andy's actually got access to uh, a microphone at this moment, so I can read his out. Um, okay, so what did your employer request that you gain from ING? We sometimes hear that ING is not highly valued uh, as CNG. What do you think were the main benefits to you gaining ING registration and any recommendations considering the options at this level? I think uh, the benefit for achieving ING uh, for me personally, probably to go with individual, it was a staged approach. I mean, from going from EngTech, if I tried to go to Chartship, it was it would be a long a long approach to get there. Where the iron for me broke it up, so it give me some short term goals to get to where I need to get to, and then uh, particularly then from the individual route was once I got to the iron point, I then needed to gain some other competencies from experience to move on to my Chartership. So it was sort of like stepping stones, and I think. For anybody going through applications, if you went from EngTech or wherever you were straight to chartership, then it's a longer process. Uh, from an incorporated route, I thought it was really good for somebody like myself who went through an individual route. It was easier to get to that point and then move further on. Now, obviously, there's a dichotomy to that for somebody who maybe has got their degree and there's maybe a mastery, there's maybe an argument to have that uh, maybe was, maybe is easy for them to go straight to chartership. That could be a potential, but what I would say is that there was a lot of learning that I got to get to Ryan's, and it certainly made the process from Ryan to Chartership much easier because I'd been through the process, understood it, 
and I've done a lot of work leading up to that, so it did make these for me. And also uh, within EDF, the, the incorporate is highly recognised, and it does help you. Like I mentioned to you there when uh, I had a little chat earlier, is that once I've got me incorporated, as well as experience and get me incorporated, door started to open. So that's at that point is when I was offered the project manager role and I moved into that role. So it did help me from an employer point of view, and obviously selling myself. Okay, perfect. Um, I've got one more question for Adriana for you. It's, would you recommend the NI to any fellow colleagues? Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> and selling from, well, uh, through this, I've got, I've got around three or four colleagues who work for me who's currently in application. Uh, we are trying to push them on to get to get through that with work commitments, but the, they are all of them are looking to work towards chartership, but the route they're going to take is go to incorporate level first and then move on to chartership. So I definitely would recommend them. Uh, and I think the support you get is unwavering, particularly from the Institute and from EDF. I've had unwavering support all the way through, which is, you know, it's good to have. It helps you out. Perfect. That is all of the questions I have. Is there anyone else who has a question? You can raise your hand for me on the little bar. Um, yeah, Clive, you don't have a question anymore, do you? You've just clicked it off. Uh, no, I think that's everything. Is there any like closing state? Oh, it looks like Adriana's got one more question for you. Um, give me one second. I think she's just writing it now. Mm -mm. Sorry, everyone, I can't seem to see the question here. Um, would you just say it for me? There you go. Hi, Ross. Hello. Hi, it's Adriana. Um, if you could offer one piece of advice to anyone thinking of joining, what would it be? Mm, good one. Let's say we have a couple of seconds here. <laughs> <laughs> Caught me off guard there. So, to be honest, what I'd say, one bit of advice is don't think too much about it. And that sounds uh, sounds quite strange saying that, but a lot of people, who, particularly who work for me, I know they'll, they'll research into it and what's the pros and cons and what do you need to do, why, what's the benefit of doing it. I think if you contact the Newton Institute and you get involved, they'll talk you through that process and all them questions they'll answer for you, where it makes that process a lot easier where you, if you speak yourself, you can talk through and say, well, this is what you're doing it for, this is where you need to go, this is what you need to do. So I think just go into it straight away and like don't procrastinate really. That's probably my best advice I would give. Thank you. I'll pass Sally back on here. Yes. <laughs> oh, I believe that's everything. Unless anyone else has got any more questions. Oh, it, it does look like we've maybe got one more question. Hello. Hello, can you hear us? Is it Chine? Yes, yes, Chini. Hi. Chini, I'm so sorry. Hello. Um, um, no worries. Sorry. Um, okay. Yeah, so I've got, I've got a question. Um, I used to be in the, um, in the nuclear industry um, where I worked two years as technical lead on the nuclear point C um, for India, actually. I currently work on um, infrastructure projects, other infrastructure projects, mainly commercial projects at the moment, because I left the EDF project. Um, would it still be possible for me to utilize two years experience in the nuclear industry um, towards becoming chartered? That probably is more of a question to you, Sally or Adriana. Oh, 
One second, I'm just passing you through to Adriana. Oh, and she's saying it's a question to Clive. Clive, can I unmute you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Clive? Yes, please. There we go. Can you repeat this? So I've got it all. Hello, can you hear me? Hello, can everyone hear? I, I yeah, live, yeah. Would you be able Hi. to repeat the question? Okay, uh, my question is, um, I, I've, I have two years experience working in the nuclear industry. Um, and um, at the moment, I am not in the industry. I work on commercial buildings. I'm a structural engineer um, by, by training. Um, would I be able to utilize my two years um, experience um, as the basis for a chartership application with the NI? You could. I think you'd find it quite difficult to satisfy the nuclear delta part rather than the engineering council com uh, commitment to competence. Okay. There might be some difficulties there for you. Uh, okay. Do you see yourself returning back to the nuclear sector? Yes. Fine. Um, in which case, it's most probably worth waiting until you're back in the sector to make sure you've, you can then satisfy the nuclear delta aspects as well as the engineering council aspects would be my advice. Okay. Um, the, nu the nuclear delta aspects, in, in a nutshell, what, what, what would that um, comprise of, apart from the usual safety and, um, you know, the, the usual safety related um, um, considerations. Three parts. three parts to the criteria. You can see an expanded view on the Nuclear Institute website, but in, in a nutshell, the three parts yeah. of the criteria are, are an understanding of the nuclear safety culture and yes. behavior, safety behavioral standards, yes. an understanding of the nuclear security culture and the yes. standards associated with that, and an understanding yes. of nuclear science and technology and safety. Okay. Relations. All right. Okay. So there's an expanded on the NI website, if you just go on the search for nuclear delta, um, okay. there are the three elements in a nutshell. Okay, but typically, uh, how many years on average um, would it take to become chartered? Or it's not really a matter of years, but rather exposure and experience? That's an excellent question. We've just had a very long debate about that at the, uh, the membership committee, because we had a, a reasonably inexperienced candidate. Um, and our yeah. conclusion was we didn't want to mandate any time uh, a trite example someone uses, someone might have 10 years experience. Yes. They might have exactly the same thing for those 10 years, so they've only got one experience. <laughs> someone with yeah. two or three years might have gained a whole cross of experience, like um, Ross was just describing there once he started to lead a team, gaining a yes. whole load of experiences in a very short time scale. Yes. Okay. All right. Does okay, that help? So that's, oh, yes, it does. Um, Clive, did you have another question? It, it was a point, really, rather than a question. Di Diana raised a point about YGN and membership. Um, just for Diana to note, we now have a YGN representative on the membership committee, a lady called Georgia Pawson, uh, and she might be able to assist you as well with your inquiry. Uh, Diana, did you have anything else that you wanted to add? Because you still got your hand up. Was there another uh, question? I didn't uh, hand up, but uh, thank you. I sorry. I hear about uh, that. I should email and I should um, like a more deeply some letters, write some letters for more deeply applications. Mm, I'm now I'm working in National Nuclear C Center. Uh, it's the eastern part of Kazakhstan. Kurchatov, maybe you hear about it, all of all of you. Um, yeah, and uh, now I, I'm in position of public policy manager, and I just want to create some social, like uh, some platform, social architecture of nuclear science platform for young for young generations. And for this one, I would like I need now for networking and uh, for 
uh, like a cre like a create some this platform. That is why I need like a memberships uh, of nuclear institute and uh, take more more knowledge for this one. Yeah. Of course, Diana, uh, we will get you in touch with uh, the right representatives for you. Is that okay? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Perfect. I really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is there any other comments from anyone else? Ross, I think that's everything. Um, did you have any closing statements that you wanted to make or are we all yeah. good? Uh, th thanks for your time. I've enjoyed it. No worries. Thank you, everyone, for joining in on this uh, webinar. I hopefully will be getting another one next month, which uh, just have a look on the socials and your newsletters uh, for the next one. Uh, yeah, thank you, everyone, for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.